Here's another one from Doug's collection. This is the SRPB07J1 variant. I'm not sure if they made on K version or anything like that. I'm pretty sure it was a J only, but anyway, here's this guy. Real quick, we'll go over the measurements because um, they're a little weird because see the K shape, see how it bells out a little bit? So if you measure including that flare out on the base, it's 42 millimeter. If you catch it at the very top, which would just be this top piece here, it's only a 40.7 millimeter. It's only 11.8 thick, and we're looking at about a 50 millimeter lug to lug, but you can see they curve down nicely. You have a display back that has the 4R35B movement in there with a colored rotor. Kind of a nice touch. It's a 10 bar water resist. It is a non screw down crown, but you do have a nice wind to it, and then you have the hack. And then you also have the date down here in between the 4 and 5 o'clock. 20 millimeter strap uh, or lug width here. You can see you have different uh, polished and brushed sections here. This is not the factory strap. This is a first time I've looked at one of these. These are a pretty affordable uh, butterfly clasp strap option you can get on eBay for like $20 or less. I think at that price range, that's some pretty cool options if you're into that style of clasp. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. But You can see you have a nice uh, hand set there with the seconds hand having the red tipped arrow there. It goes all the way out to that minute seconds track. Very pilot stylish with the 12, 3, 6, and 9. Super legible. You can see, let me zoom in here. You can see you have a nice applied Seiko logo in there, black date wheel, cursive writing for the automatic, made in Japan, and then the movement down there by the 6, 4 or 35. Did I say 4 or 36 before? It is a 4 or 35B. If I said 36, I apologize. Made in Japan on the back there. Not sure what that little icon there means. The the U or I'm not sure what that is. The A4, all that stuff. If you guys know what that is, let me know. It does have a sapphire crystal. I'm sure it's hard lex on the back. But really cool. Um, I think these are discontinued. Not think. I know these are discontinued. I I can't find them uh, available anywhere except for like uh, eBay. And the prices range all over the price place. Uh, but they're definitely over 200. Occasionally you'll see one just under 200 on the used market, but you can see this one's in really good shape. And as you guys know, uh, if you watched the previous video, you can see there's a little bit of wear right there. But you'll know that uh, Doug is going to be selling all these off, so I'll put my email in the description if you're interested in snagging this guy. I'm sure we can make a deal. Here it is on my seven and a quarter, seven and eighth inch wrist. You can see this one fits really nice. Actually, I kind of like this strap. I think it pairs really good with this watch. But a, you know, a NATO or um, just about any other strap would do really good with this too. But I think Doug did a really good job pairing these watches up. Here it is next to that watch I reviewed yesterday. You can see it's a little bit smaller. Not as much presence as this guy. I do want to touch base real quick on this guy because um, on Instagram I was sent a video from a uh, viewer that he had an issue where this uh, outer bezel part here popped off. And when it did, it actually took the crystal with it. So the crystal is actually pressed into, I know this isn't the watch that we're talking about, but let's just talk about it. The crystal on this guy is actually pressed into this part. So if this part comes off the watch case, then the crystal comes with it. And this does not turn. It looks like it turns, but it does not turn. And that was something else somebody asked. I assure you this does not turn on this guy. But uh, back to this guy. So really good dimensions, um, really good case shape and everything like that. So if you're um, after something in this look, I think this is a really good option. 
not sure how, how uh, available they are. I know there are some on eBay, but they seem like they're in Singapore or Italy or something like that. This one's in the United States, so definitely an option there. You can see the crown has that, that almost the same crown that's on this guy. Maybe exactly the same. So you can see it like crown pushes out a little bit on the edge there. Kind of matches the case and everything. I'll give you a loom shot. Shut off the studio lights. You got some really good loom on the hands, and then you have uh, little pips there at the 12, 3, 6, and 9. So, again, I'm sure some of you guys are going to be disappointed that you wish they would have loomed up the numbers and indices. That would have been awesome if they did, but they didn't, and that's okay for this price of these guys. So it is kind of nice to have that touch of the gold rotor on the back, too. So let me know if you guys have any questions or comments on this guy. I want to share it with you real quick for those that have stuck around. This will be the watch I'll be reviewing next. This is a SNXJ89K. I'm still doing a little bit of research on this guy. This is kind of like the uh, Datejust um, homage watch that Seiko did. Super cool watch. It has a 7S26 movement in it. I'm still trying to do a little bit of research because uh, these are... From what I'm finding out, actually kind of a little sought-after gem. If you can find one in this condition, they're um, becoming slightly rare. So this has like an aftermarket bracelet, and then it has the factory bracelet. But I'll be doing a, a little talk on that guy real soon, hopefully tomorrow. So there you guys go. See you on the next video.